close, no, I can't take a loss at all. At all, at all. Let me put you up on game, it ain't all about the fame at all. Uh uh, uh uh. They talking down on my name, trying to put me to shame, that's all. That's all, that's all. Might be in the Hall of Fame, I can be like you lame. Yeah, 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 like we always do about this time. I am Cornbread Capone. This is Unpopular Honesty, the home of brutal honesty and real hip-hop music. Today, my special guest is somebody who I've been knowing for a while. You know, known him through my brother C. Rest in peace. Um, he is a culinary genius if i must say so myself you know what i'm saying and also an actor but we're gonna talk about all that and more you know what i'm saying if you don't know who i'm talking about i'm talking about the homie i call him paul wall you know what i'm saying but what do you like would like the people to address you hey man you call me paul wall pw jd just as long as you don't call me late for supper you did what i'm talking about yeah man so we're gonna start with the food first, because that's what you do. Um, for those who might not know, please tell them what it is you do, what it is you sell. Oh, yeah, man. So when we do sell plates, we sell soul food plates. It's Big Dog's Kitchen on Facebook. You can look that up and check out some pictures of the food that we that we bring to you. But it's always a big dog plate. You're going to get more than you expect when you get something from us. Right. That's good, man. Um what made you get into the cooking? Uh, my ex-wife said I couldn't cook. <laughs> so that motivated you to learn. I'm telling cook. you, man, like she was always cooking. And then when I would try to cook, she would come in and cook a whole nother meal. So I was like, nah, it can't be like that. Wow. Well, um, so I cook everything from scratch now. Uh, down to the gumbo, you know what I'm saying? I make my own roux, chop my own onions. Although I do know that H-E-B has been chopped vegetables that make stuff a lot easier. Mm. Well, that's good, man. Um, do you have any plans of going outside of soul food or just staying in soul food? Uh, well, I like to cook soul food, but I can cook anything. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I can cook Italian food. I, I make fettuccine alfredo, chicken fettuccine alfredo from scratch. Um, it's really kind of like about the basics of, if you know the basics of cooking, you can really kind of put anything together. Uh, I was telling somebody the other day when I go grocery shopping, most people will put a meal together on a piece of paper and get ingredients for just that meal. But I don't have to do that. I just kind of shop for whatever I'm looking for and then when I get home, I know I can put this, this, and this together and make this. You know what I mean? Right. If you know basics of how, like, how to make a sauce. You know what I mean? If you know basics of how to make a roux. Uh, you know what I mean? Those are things that, that go a long way when you need to stretch some food. You know what I mean? What does your future look like in terms of the, you know what I'm saying, the food? What are, you, what are your ambitions? What are your goals that you're trying to reach with that? I mean, you know, I just like to reach people with my food, really. I'm not going to lie to you. I like to, one, I like the look on their face after they get to taste my food. And then, two, I like the amazement of a white boy cooked it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I really kind of try to cook all my food. Like, you couldn't tell who brought what at the cookout. You know what I'm talking about? So, uh, and that's anything from barbecue to lasagna. I just want you to, to go, the white boy made that? Wow. Yeah, that's live right there, man. <laughs> well, I guess we can speak about the acting, you know what I'm saying, right now, you know what I'm saying? Got us a, a series that we're going to be uh, contributing to. Word, word. You know what I'm saying? How do you feel about the acting side? Uh, the acting side of Acting is cool, man, you know what I mean? I, I uh, took a little drama when I was in high school, I guess. But, I mean, just being part of something, I, I feel humbled by that part alone, you know what I mean? That somebody would ask me to be part of something that they have a vision for. Uh, so I hope I can 
do it justice and, and make it into what they see in their head. You know what I'm talking about? All right. Well, I got another question for you. When Go you're ahead. in the kitchen cooking, yeah. when you're in the kitchen cooking, throwing okay. down, yeah. what kind of music does JD listen to? Oh, man, I like uh, the Osley Brothers' Journey to Atlanta, Screwed and Chopped. Uh, wow. I want to be your man, Screwed and Chopped. Computer love, Screwed and Chopped. Anything Screwed and Chopped, but it's got to be old, man. Yeah. That's that's what I get down to. If you ain't checked it out, man, you need to check it out, for real. That Journey to Atlanta, something about that guitar in the first part of it, man. Just get you where you need to be. I feel that. Well, you know, this is a hip-hop platform, and I always have to ask this question to everybody, whether they are artists or they just listen to music. What is JD's top five best rappers? Uh, DMX. The dog. Yes, sir. Um, I've always liked Busy Bone. Busy Bone. Because he was fast yeah. when I was a kid. Um, I got caught with the East 1999 album, and my mama was going to beat my tail, boy. Why? Because she didn't get down like that. You know what I mean? She's Southern mama. We, we going to listen to country, boy. Oh, okay. So okay. she found okay. that. And, but, wow. uh, you know what I mean? I've always been a hip-hop head, too, and I got a story for you uh, as far as some music goes. But uh, I don't like Lil Wayne. Uh Sorry, you asked who I like. I apologize. That wasn't the answer. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I do like some of Young Boy's stuff. You know what I mean? I know that's a newer newer cat, but some of his stuff, I mean, it's it's more, I'm not going to lie to you, it's more the music. It's not the lyrical content that gets me. If the If the beat is right, I somehow end up knowing all the lyrics. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, if it, yeah, it, it's not... You you can test me if you want to, but uh, if even if, if I don't like the song, I will more know the lyrics. But I like the beat. You know what I'm saying? Right. So th that's what really draws me in is the musical part of it, and then from the musical part, I just inherently know every lyric. Right. And that that is annoying to me. But uh, Warren G. And uh, I know you said rappers, but I was like, uh, oh, Slick Rick. Slick Rick, the original story. Everybody time. leaves Slick Rick out, but you know, Lottie Dottie, we likes to party. Yeah, I mean, he, you can't have rap without Slick Rick. I'm going to say that because he, he is the one that taught you how to tell the story. Right. From here's a little story I'd like to tell. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, but telling you that I've always liked hip hop, man. I lived at a boys' home, a Baptist boys' home, from the age of eleven to the age of nineteen, and they would not let us listen to anything but the radio and Christian music from the Christian store. And I had a bunch of music down here in Texas, at CDs back then. I know y'all millennials, y'all ain't gonna know what a CD is. You know what I'm saying? You used to have to pack a big book of them if you wanted to go somewhere. You remember that? Yeah. I still got mine. <laughs> Look, so they wouldn't let us have them, but I boxed everything I had up. I had Master P, The Last Dawn. That's about the, when the time that was. And I boxed them all up, and I sent them to my friend in Arkansas, and then we smuggled them into the boys' home. If you're from the boys' home, I'm sorry, but we had a lot of music that we wasn't supposed to have. I, that's where I had my first uh, two-short CD. What album was that? Um, the one with Blowjob Betty. Oh, that's born. I can't, man, right? Yeah, I think with it was the white Cadillac. Uh, I didn't. Oh, we, we didn't get that. We got the CD. You but feel that me? was the we cover. All we, his, we it was all white. I, came, I couldn't car, tell you man. what the cover yeah. was because we didn't get it. Yeah. And then they had some other friends. They they would allow them to bring speakers and stuff. They took the speaker out and put their CDs and stuff in there. So we so for the love of the music. We was breaking the rules, you know what I'm saying? Because we used to listen to all that stuff, uh, do or die, pole pimping. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was classic to us. We used to sing regulators on the back of the bus. 20 white kids in a country school singing regulators on the back of a bus. I mean, that just show you how much of a hit that was. You see what I'm talking about? But that was 
when that shit came out, that was summer of 94, and I'll never forget that. I mean, I, I went to Houston that year. I don't get to tell this story. Well, tell so me. I guess I get to tell it. Go that. ahead. Well, I was a part of a, a organization that went to, that would have a convention every year in Houston. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, you know what I'm saying? I was with uh, my church, Our Mother Mercy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So we went to Houston. I, I believe where we were staying was like mm, close to the downtown area. You know what I'm saying? So, But some of us who knew our way around the city went to other places because I had a friend who at this 94, at this time, Screw was on the rise, on the come up. But I remember a couple of people who came with us, they went and bought some screw tapes because they came back with these great cassettes. Yeah. And I was like, what is that? You know what I'm saying? And then when we got back to Beaumont, he played it for me. And I, my first time hearing it, I was like, is it supposed to be like, I thought his radio was messed up the first time I heard it. Yeah. And so I was like, hey, check your radio. That tape <laughs> might be getting chewed up or something. Yeah. He was like, oh, no, nah, that's how it's supposed to go. And I was like, oh, really? So I sat back and I listened and I was like, not really thinking too much of it, not really saying yay or nay, but I do remember that happening uh, at this time period. And also uh, when Regulate came out, Regulate was above the rim. Above the rim came out in March. I already had above the rim. I bet you did. But what came out in the summer of 94 was Big Mike, Something Serious, and the brat functified. Mm -hmm. And I went to the mall and bought both of them. So I got both cassettes. So I'm going back to the convention live. Give me some green, everything live. Next thing you know, my little tapes come up missing. Somebody, somebody tried to pull the okie doke because I walked to a chair, raised up the cushion, my tape's sitting there. Yeah. They try to get you know what I'm saying? Like, like just took them and put them somewhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, in, and this was people who was older than me because at the time I'm like 14. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, these people who was on this trip who are older than me, and this was supposed to be a uh, Christian youth organization event. Ain't supposed, supposed to be Stephen. To, yeah. Ain't supposed to be doing a lot of stuff we was doing. <laughs> oh man, you know yeah, I mean? oh yeah, that's the worst right there on oh, the Christian retreats, boy. What? They was acting so bad oh, on the slab. Yeah. Oh, this was. I mean, you was coming up with plans how to get to the girls on the bus. Oh man, it was going down. <laughs> it was going down on them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I was, went on them trips too. You know, it was acting bad. I ain't gonna. Yeah. We're going to stay there. We're going to keep it moving. Uh, how do you feel about new rap music as opposed to the rap music that was coming out in the 90s and the 80s? Um, a lot of it's kind of trash. The lyrical content is not what it should be. Um, they come up real quick now. When I was a kid, they really had to put in work and go here and go there and do this and do that. And, now you post a video on TikTok and you get 10,000 views and somebody brings you a chain and says, here you go. Uh, yeah, like I don't, you know, it's... it's Or like you use the finesse two-time method where before he went to the penitentiary, all he used to do was sit in a hotel room with some weed in front of him, a gun over here and just roll up all day and get a million streams off of just people just watching his live. That really happened? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know who these people are. Yeah, I don't Fernandez know what they time. did to you know come Fernandez up. Time. I don't know. Yeah, he coming to Beaumont. Uh, he really is? Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, if they have... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there be when, a lot of bad people, you when know what I'm saying? Well, when is it supposed to be soon? Uh, the 17th, I think. Of this one? Yeah. Oh, okay. You well, know, it's a, it's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. Oh, that's who sing that song? Yeah, that's for next okay. two times. You know me, man. I don't listen to you know, well, listen to nothing new. But uh, I mean, you know he did say saying? free auto rim on some jail in Beaumont. Oh, so was was he locked up out here? Yeah, he was in the federal penitentiary right here because he had. Uh, they, I think they had a show, and and five people got shot or killed or something like that. Don't quote me because I'm not real sure. But I know 
he got charged for it, and they gave him federal time to put him out here. Jack oh. Prince Jr. was out here too. I didn't know that. Um, you know what I'm saying? Project I mean, Pat was out here too. I knew Project Pat was out here. Yeah. I knew BG so was out here. Yeah. Um, a couple of there's a couple of other people that have been locked up down here. That federal penitentiary. I heard Mac Dre was down here too. Right. When he was, you know what I'm saying, back when, back in the day. Um, I wanted to ask you about, because I love Mexican food. Okay. That's like my vice. Yeah, I have Mexican I have food to, for breakfast. I have to <laughs> refrain from certain things because certain, if you eat too much of it, it becomes unhealthy. Yeah, well. But, you know what I'm saying, healthier versions of Mexican food. Well, I'm going to say Tex-Mex. You, you know just like you have to watch your seasonings and just kind of cut back, find a healthier option. Will you be cooking anything Mexican food? Yeah, I cook a lot. Uh, the other day I made uh, a Mexican chicken casserole. Wow. Yeah, something I mean, different, something I ain't yeah. heard of. I mean, it's good. Use Doritos in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Something my mom used to cook for me when I was a kid. Now, you know what? And, uh, and to piggyback on that, somebody told me that they looked at me and said Kobe, and I said, what do you mean? That stuff was good. They're like, man, your mama was making struggle meals and you didn't even know it. I'm like, that wasn't no struggle meal. That was a good meal. Right. It brings back memories of my mom when I make that stuff. That, uh, pinto beans and ham hocks and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Broccoli cheese, cornbread, that was my mama's specialty. Right. So when I miss my mama, I usually cook something that she cooked. Meatloaf or something like that, you know. So, what does the future look like for you, man? You know what I'm saying in terms of, uh, you know, the the acting. You got the, the food and no no telling what else may be up your sleeve. We got what you we got, got plan. We got C's record label. It's gonna come out this year. Uh, we found the LLC and we, we getting all that taken care of. So, Slow Vision Entertainment will be back up and running. Yeah. That's what's up, man. What's your plans for with that, with Slow Vision? Uh, we're going to do some, uh, you know, we got a lot of beats that are going to be coming out. We're going to be selling beats and we're going to be looking for artists and we got some people that's going to do some media for us as well. So we're looking to uh, have the artists back as far as putting them out there. You know what I mean? Get them some exposure and get them posted on some different sites, you know, SoundCloud and YouTube and things like that, but definitely get them some exposure. Yeah, man, that's good, man. I like to say rest in peace to my homeboy, C-Mo, you know what I'm saying, forever in our hearts and forever in the memory of uh, of me and JD, you know what I'm saying? Um, gonna continue pushing, man. It, before we get up out of here, though, do you have anything you want to say to anybody? Please plug your social media. Please plug the food. Anything else? Uh, yeah, man. No, well, not really, man. Uh, the joint of day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> <laughs> smoke them if you got them. That's about all I can say. Right. If you can't stroke it, smoke it. That's right. That's my slogan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, on behalf of Mr. J.D., and the good people at One Man Records, I am Cornbread Capone. This is Unpopular Honesty, the home of brutal honesty and real hip-hop music. Until next time, everybody, peace love. and love, because that's what the world needs, peace and love.